station when he went back off leave. I had the feeling I'd never see him again. Look, there's hundreds of mothers and wives and sweethearts all think like that from time to time. The thing is not to lose hope. Here, yeah, it's a good job that Mrs. Watson and listen to what she oh, was saying. Oh, I haven't said anything to her well, about you won't it. won't want her neither. Yeah. And Alan's a clever lad, you know. He knows all about what goes on up there. He can look after his stuff, no doubt. Now. Did you see it? Oh, the Zeppelin! But, so did you, you know? see it? It flew right over the top of Hale's Cops, as bold as you please. I thought I heard something. Mrs. Rogers in Ledbury Street says she saw it come out of a cloud the other day. Hey, what's the Zeppelin doing over these parts? On its way back from London. They dropped more bombs last week. Did you read the papers? Why is it we never hear her until a week after it's happened? They don't want to frighten the public, my dad says. Oh. Oh. They won't frighten me, I can tell you. Some little man in a spiked helmet dangling under a sausage. It just made me damn cross. Here, yeah. watch out her planes doing. That's what I want to know. Now, oh, well, uh, you'd think our aeroplanes would be able to do something to stop them, wouldn't you? Alan's in France. There's not much she can do about a zeppelin flying over a Beckett cilia. No. <coughs> I must no. go. Your milk's in the kitchen, Mrs. Oh, Thomas. Thank you, Norman. Bye, Tom. Bye, Norman. Right. Now, then, we were going to have a look at these books, then, weren't we? Ah, yes, here we are. Two tons of Welsh Smith coal at 13 and 6 a ton. Well, that's 27 shillings we owe there. Is that right? Uh, let me see. <coughs> Harrows and drags for Yates's farm. You've made a start in them, have oh, you? They come in a few days ago, Mrs. A few days ago? That was three weeks ago, more yeah, like. Now, have you made a start? No, on? well, they're first on the list. Oh, well, that means you haven't. Yeah. What do you do all the time, Tom? Oh, I make five sets of shoes a day for, for the war contract. Now, I've only got one pair of hands, Mrs. It takes less than an hour to make a set of shoes. That leaves you the best part of half a day to be making a bit of profit. And, Tom, what's this? Oh, hmm? oh that'd be them sheep fold bars for the cornices, I reckon. Oh, Tom, that was promised three weeks ago. Yeah, well, the thing is... The thing I... is, you've let things slip, Tom Cheater, haven't you? Well, uh, I have got a bit behind, Missus, but I'll manage. I'll catch up. You certainly I... will catch up. I'm not playing games. I'm at war, <laughs> now, do you understand? Collecting a few more holes again, have you? You know, I think we'd be better off using my pocket Kodak than the monstrosity I suppose you use for aerial photography. I suppose you realise it's a court martial offence for a soldier to have a personal camera out here. Yes, well, hardly soldiers, are we, thank the Lord. Yes, but if I had my pocket Kodak, ah, I could. Ah, here is a good photograph. Oh, yes, this was really very good What's indeed. That? I quite like that. It's come out oh. awfully well. Legendary blacksmith of St. Marie. <laughs> yeah, he's marring Corporal Chisholm's thumbprint. Well... I suppose his bride-to-be will appreciate it, then. Yes, I must give it to him to send her. Yeah. Yes. Sir. Oh, thank you, Vincent. Your sergeant, what is it? Mr. Darrowfield, sir. One of the Eindeckers shot him down, sir. Did he manage to make a landing? He blew up, sir. Bullets must have hit his tank. I see. Thank you very much. I did go after the Eindecker, sir. We were over our side of the lines. We still can't match his speed, sir. Every time he realises he's got a fight in his hands, he's off. Yes, Sergeant. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sir. Excuse me, sir. Yes. Major Lansing's on his way. Thank you. He's here, sir. Yes, sir. Richard, see to the mustering of Darrowfield's effects, please. Yes. Poor old Darrowfield. Come on, have some toast. 
Ah. Major. Hello. Thought you might enjoy another visit from the plaguey staff. Didn't expect you quite so soon after your last visit. Well, aren't you lucky? So, how goes the General's forward action As policy? As he suggested, we're attacking the Eindeckers. Our machines have been fitted with a more powerful engine. We've adopted Sergeant Farmer's idea of mounting a Lewis gun to fire forward. You lost the machine today. Mr. Darrowfield? I'll get them to send you down another machine from Pilot. What about a replacement pilot? Has he left school yet? Do you like a drink? Thank you. Attacking these new home monoplanes, it's no job for pilots just send over from Blighty. Flying inferior machines, it's difficult enough for experienced pilots like Sergeant Farmer, Mr. Galian, to manage to stay alive. I've... Uh... Mills, would you leave us, please, a moment? Yes, sir. Sure, sir. I've got a rather interesting little operation for you. That's what you said three weeks ago. Yes, I also explained that we would have other tasks for you, of a forward action nature. We'd like you to forget the Eindeckers for the time being. Forget the Eindeckers? Mm -hmm. You expect me to tell my pilots to forget the Eindeckers after all the preparation we've done to equip them? Just you people explain. up in HQ will pause to consider what these changes of policy, these bright ideas, do for the morale of the men who have to do the actual flying? This is something rather special. But it's always something rather special. There's a conference coming up in London. When is there not a conference coming up politics, in London? Politics, yes, but important the politics never... Politics Captain, the outcome could mean the complete reorganisation of the Naval Air Service and the Flying Corps into one single service. That's a marvellous idea. The General's view entirely. And that's precisely why he's so anxious to have a voice that will command attention at the conference table. After all, if we are going to end up with one single service, it would be a great pity if the Flying Corps didn't have its full say in how it's to be run. Mm. I mean, these naval chaps, they're a devious lot. Mm, by the sound of it, we're not doing too badly ourselves. What we need is a lever to make these politicians sit up and take notice. Mm. An achievement in military terms that will enhance our, what shall I say... You want me to provide the general with a plum? so that he can say, what a good boy am I. I wouldn't put it quite like that. Nevertheless, that is, uh, that is the general idea, yes. Hmm. There you are. Okay. Take a look at that. Oh, and we'd rather your pilots didn't get to know the real reason behind this operation. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. You'll be sharing with Sergeant Farmer. Alan. Mm. Alan. Cup of tea, mate. Mm. Yes, that's good. Careful, it's very hot. Oh, and uh, uh, Don Hollywake. Pleased to meet you. I'll leave you two together. That was quick. Hey. Oh no, you can't be the replacement pilot. I wouldn't even have heard of Mr. Darfield yet. Well, I don't know about a replacement, mate, but uh, I'm certainly a pilot. Be it never so humble, there's no place like home. Even if it is only for a few weeks. Not your permanency. <laughs> Not many of us are. No, no, let's have none of your old house, your father. How many hours? Going on 200. May 1913, I joined. Not one of these blokes who saw the war as a chance to learn to fly. I was learning to fly when I was 14. Saw my father burned to death on his first solo. Where are you from? Somerset? Sussex. Oh, farmer's boy, eh? Just my name. Blacksmith by trade. None of iron, are we? Need to be to survive in this flight. This is a special flight. Harrison Eindeckers, keeping them busy. Stop them shooting down our reconnaissance machines. Game of bluff, really. Machine is not much use for this. But your pilot's the superior, of course. Yes, I wouldn't be looking at you, would I? 
I think me and you are going to get them like our hair's on fire. I'll give you a few tips about the Iron Deckers if you I'll want. I'll be giving you a few tips in all by and by. Oh, yeah, what on? You'll see. You're right, I'm not a replacement. Only you're on loan, see, for this uh, one operation. What operation? Well, that'd be telling, wouldn't it? Oh, yeah, like a handsome for her. Sorry, but I'm not supposed to say yeah. anything until Major Lance has had a word with your flight commander. What's his name? Triggers. What's he like? You'll find out, won't you? I'll find out nothing, because I won't be looking. I just don't want them tell, nothing more, nothing less. When you've been in the army as long as I have, you'll be wise enough to do the same. <laughs> Old soldiers never die, eh? Because they look after number one. You want to know why I'm here? You seen the newspapers, have you? Oh, yes, every morning. James brings them in with the tea and biscuits. Oh, like that, are we? Look, I landed ten minutes ago. And provided my machine's ready to fly, I'm going back up there in half an hour's time. Meanwhile, I'd like to get a bit of rest, right? You'll find after a few days, if you last that long, that you might fly the same way too. I've got good news for you, mate. You've no good news till we're winning this war. Well, at least this new operation will make a change for you. You look as if you could do with one. What new operation? We've already been given a new operation. Harrison Eindeckers. Special task, personal, from the General. And now you've been given another special task, personal, from the General. That's why I'm here. I haven't been up at the HQ for the last six weeks for nothing, have I? <coughs> you play your cards right, it'll be a good loaf. What will? You ever seen a dirigible, have you? 200 yards long, near enough. A million cubic feet of hydrogen gas. Machine guns, bombs, wireless telegraphy. Zipped. Make a change from your little line decker, won't it? See now. You're not managing, are you? Managing? Of course I'm managing. Tom, I've worked in that kitchen for the best part of 20 years. I know what a busy forge sounds like. Yes, well, you see, uh, I'm a bit chesty this morning, missus. It's time of year. Uh, it'll pass. Don't worry, it'll pass. <coughs> and I've managed to mug up as much as I can on the beasts, and, uh, well, the general idea seems to be that they'll ascend from their bases on the Rhine and use the new sheds that are going up in Belgium, here on the outskirts of Brussels and here around Ghent. Now, they'll use these as uh, forward operating bases where they can rearm and refuel in between raids on England. Well, that's all very well, but I mean, do we know their speed, height, ceiling, armament? Well, I wasn't actually asked Thank to you, do Mr. That. Bravington. No, that's fine. Sergeant Holloway. Sir. You're the expert. Yes, sir. Take over the brief. Thank you, sir. <laughs> right, gentlemen, if you just pay attention, please. Speed. Up to 60, we estimate. That is in still air, of course. Armament, two machine guns. One here in the forward gondola, and one here in the after gondola. He also carries a considerable load of bombs, usually of the 50 or the 100 pounds variety. Height, ceiling, anything up to 20,000 feet. And once he puts his mind to it, Can Zeppelin can outclimb anything we've got. A nice steady gun platform, too. You can expect an accurate rate of fire from them. Sir, about the Eindeckers, sir. Our orders to forget the Eindeckers for the time being. Yes, sir, but the Eindeckers aren't going to forget us, are they, sir? HQ want us to concentrate all our energies on anti Zeppelin operations. Yes, sir, but with the added bomb load, we'll be even more vulnerable. We'll just have to take our chance, won't we, Sergeant? Something on your mind, Mr. Galian? Well, sir, it's all very well you saying that we have to bomb these Zeppelin sheds, but, I mean, you show me a pilot who can bomb with any degree of accuracy, or show me a very unusual fellow. That's why Sergeant Hollywake's here. He's going to show us how.
Quiet, please, gentlemen. Keep it down, please. Sorry. There is one consolation, sir. Yes. And that is that we've been practicing on a very small target. The Zeppelin sheds, as you know, are of a very considerable size. Mm. So our chances of hitting them should be pretty reasonable. I hope so. Gentlemen, although our aim is to bomb the Zeppelins in their sheds, if we are fortunate enough to catch one in the air, climb above them, drop your bombs, we should be able to hit something. Uh, may I interject a comment, sir? Yes. There is a slight variation in the rate of climb of our machines. Mm -hmm. In view of the Zeppelin's fast rate of climb, I think the pilot's best of bombing should fly our machines with the best rate of climb. Yes, I agree. You'd better take Sergeant Farmer's machine, all right, Sergeant? Thanks. No, sir, I think That's I can the most practical way, Sergeant. But, sir, I know Sergeant. my machine. If Tom can't manage on his own, I mean, he can't. Not without help. He needs a striker and not one to be found, even if I could afford to pay him. You'll have your friend to pay Tom. What's to be done, then? Well, I had sort of Sally. The smithy. I don't want to sell. Apart from anything else, I've got you and Alan to think about. When Alan comes home on leave, you two will be married. And then when the war is over, Alan will want to be Smith here. Yes, he will. So, what's to be done then? Okay. A letter to you, lad, you love? My fiance. Oh, yes. When's the happy day? My next leave. Whenever that may be. Oh, you all said for the matter why I was myself. Wasted time. Of course, you haven't been in London when the Zepps come over, have you? You haven't seen them running for the shelter. Zepps morale, that's what bombing does. Breaks the will to fight. We'll have nothing left to fight with if we don't do something about those Eindeckers. Besides, no one's an expert on bombing yet. I mean, we'll just get an expert on aerial fighting. Didn't shoot the little Eindeckers down, now, did you? We had the measure of them, though. Now we've given them a free hand again. You're out of touch, you are. I've been up the HQ, remember? Bombing. It's the warfare of the future. So it's got to make sense to bomb them before they bomb us. Yeah, but what have they achieved so far, eh? These Zeppelins. They've scattered a few bombs around the countryside and scared a few sheep. Well, our FC pilots have been fed to the Iron Decker by the dozen. Fuck off, Otter. That's what they're calling us now. Do you know that? You look at it this way. How would you feel if a Zeppelin dropped a bomb on your fiancé? Or your mum? That would make you change your tune soon enough, wouldn't it? Think about it. Progress. Uh, eight sorties flare, one engine failure. Mine, sir, a couple of minutes after takeoff. You want to pick your pun? Mine, sir, a couple of minutes after takeoff. Um, one failed to reach the target. Uh, mine, sir, miss patches over again, sir. Got a bit lost, sir. Mm. Well, turn back. I was attacked by an Eindecker, sir. I considered it prudent not to engage him. Uh, 18 bombs released? Eight? No. Five sorties flown, should be 20 bombs released. My second sortie, sir. Two bombs failed to release, sir. Sergeant Hollywood. We'll check the release mechanisms, sir. Not foolproof by any means. Hmm. No significant results. Thank you, gentlemen. I'll try again tomorrow. Ah, uh, Richard. Yes, sir? I'd like you to put these results in the signal form, please. Yes, sir. 
The general's going to be too thrilled. <laughs> no, uh, not very impressive, are they? No. I understand a Zeppelin was sighted north of Dunkirk this morning. Really? Yeah. Like from a night out over London. That's regarded as a sort of milk run down there. <laughs> but why us, eh? Why use four miserable little BE2s for three weeks when the Navy's been raiding the Zeppelin sheds for the last ten months? Well, I really don't know, He Alan. knows, Hollywake. But he's not saying. He likes to keep it a secret. Thinks he's important, knowing some of the rest of us don't. Oh, for God's sake, just leave it alone. You don't even think about it, do you? This whole operation of ours is just a drop in the ocean. We should be going after Eindeckers. That's what we've trained ourselves for, and I would just sit in ducks for them. Yes, but sometimes ducks need a change from water, you know? You know, I thought we'd go to the village, have a drink at that place we used to, you know? No, thank you. No. Oh. I meant to give you this. Sorry it's torn. I thought your milkman man like to hang it on the dairy wall. Well, good Lord, you really are Mr. Glenn these days, Oh, everything's you? a joke to you, isn't it? You just laugh it all away. Well, the hun isn't going to laugh it away. And if you don't get him, he's sure as hell going to get you. Sorry. Well, if you don't mind this damn snapshot, I'll, I'll take... Do. Sorry, thank you. Put it in the letter. Some other time, eh? Good night, man. Good night. Is that you, Tom? Yes, this is his brain. For what I'm worth. <coughs> Lovely morning. Well, after all that rain. Uh, you didn't say anything to Alice, did you? Oh, uh, No, 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 I didn't. Now, how are you feeling today? Oh, it could be worse. Well, we've got Yates's pair coming in this morning, haven't we? Aye. <clears throat> We're shooing. Aye. Now, do you think you can manage that? Yes, I reckon I can. <laughs> you could do with some help, couldn't you? Yes, I could at that, Mrs. We were saying, you've got no striker. Now, now, suppose that I was to find one. Now, listen, Mrs. You said we couldn't afford to pay another man. No, I'm not one to be found anyway. But suppose, suppose I did find someone. Where? Well, a, a lad, maybe, an apprentice. Well, you won't get a lad from around here, Mrs., because they're all too busy making money in the war factories. Yes, but if I did, how long would it take him before he could learn his trade? Oh, well, I've been smithy and nigh on 50 years, Mrs., and I'm still learning. No, you know what I mean. How long would it be before he could be of a decent help to you? Oh, it'll depend on the lad, wouldn't it? Oh, he's a bright lad. Lived next to the forge for the best part of his life. You got a lad in mind, then? Yes, sir. Her lad, you said? Well, with this round me, my hair tied back, you will know the difference. But you won't have the strength, Mrs. And besides, it's not a woman's work. <laughs> it's not a woman's work shoveling coal or being a tram conductor. It's not women's work tarring roads or digging graves. Tom, but they're doing it and more. Look, I've made up my mind. I belong here. I'm going to have to work somewhere as soon as I <laughs> spill the sweat of my brow here in this forge, turning out shoes for the cavalry, yes, well, and work in Claiborne's yes, factory, turning yeah. out shells <laughs> for innocent men to blow themselves to kingdom come. Uh, no, it's no good, Mrs. You wouldn't last today. now. Well, in that case, you can have a good laugh at me and say I told you so. Uh, I, I, I can. Right, now put him over the beak. That's it. One, not another one. And another one. Oh! Uh, it's no good, I tell you, missus. But, oh. Tom, I'm not giving up. I wasn't married to Will Farmer for the best part of 20 years without some determination rubbing off on me. Now then. I'll put this over the beak, is that No, right? you won't put it over the beak because it's cold. You've got to work iron when it's hot, and you've got to work it quick. 
And I'll put it back in the fire and get another one out. You know, coming in here all these years watching, you'd think I would learn these things. Uh, watching's one thing, Mrs. Doing is another. Over under the beak. That's it. Put him back there, little bit. Uh, no. Huh? There we are now. Eat him there. Right. Ah, another yeah. one there. Yeah. Ah. Have you two got no homes to go to? Go on, be off with you. He's gone. Get out of it. Hey, you'll be famous now, missus. The whole of the village will know by nightfall, and the whole of Caxon by the morning. Hey, what about Beckett's Hill? Hey, got a lady blacksmith up there. I mean, funny if it wasn't so pathetic. I mean, I couldn't climb above him because of the way the blessed bomb. Yes, well, the question we should be asking ourselves is when is the Zeppelin most vulnerable? God knows. Uh, I don't know. At the beginning of his sortie, when is ascending? Why? Well, it'll be full of fuel, bombs, ballast, mm. ammunition. And his disgusting black sausages they all eat. <laughs> yes, so his rate of climb will be slow. Ah, but I wonder. What do you mean, why? Well, he, he'll, he will be fed and rested. He'll, he'll be on the alert. He'll have plenty of ammunition and he'll know where he is. Yeah, that always helps. Mm -hmm. I'd say he's much more vulnerable on his descent when he's coming back to his base. He'll be uh, tired, cold, maybe low on fuel. Yes, dreaming of a warm bed, a fat frau line. <laughs> Richard, when we were making out those, uh, that report to HQ the other day, you said something about sighting a zeppelin over Dunkirk. Yes, sir. How did you know that? Uh, Sergeant Mills told me. Mills? How, how did he know? Well, he, he was on the field telephone to Aircraft Park, a friend of his. Oh, well, they're always seeing Zeppelins, apparently. Ah, all right, Vincent. Yes, Vincent, I want to see Sergeant Mills. Sir. And, and I want to see Sergeant Holly Wake and Sergeant Farmer as well. Here in the mess? Yes, here in the mess. Sir. It's a totally good idea. You want to kick yourself for not having him sooner. I've seen the iron decker pilots do it. Involved. You tuck him from behind and he pulls up into a loop and he half rolls and he's way back in the opposite direction. Your crib. Then if he's feeling like attacking you, all he has to do is pull back again, half roll back and he's up your backside, clacking away with that forward firing machine gun. Alan. That reminds me, when are we going to get our long awaited forward firing machine gun then, eh? Alan, why don't you pack your little iron decker back in the shed and close the doors for the night, eh? Shall I tell you something? In the officer's mess, it's forbidden to talk shop. Isn't that right, Bob? I do have some sort of custom. Custom nothing. It's a rule, mate. No talking shop. Reckon we could do with the same. Yeah, well, you're not an officer, are you? Yes, lad. What is it? Message from the flight commander wants to see you in the officer's mess. What, me? All three of you, Sarge. Well, what this is all about. Well, if they don't talk shop in the officer's mess... Probably need three mouths to finish off their brandy. Thirty. Oh, oh, uh, 26, double 13. Woo! Did it, Dad. <laughs> Mills, come in, come in. Come on, come in. Now, Mills. I want you to man the telephone link one hour before dawn, get onto as many coastal stations as you can, and tell them you want immediate information of any sightings. Sightings? Sir. Zeppelin, Sergeant. Oh, yes, sir. You want to know where they are, their approximate height, heading, time of their sighting. Got that? I think so, sir. What do you mean you think, sir? Do you understand or don't you? Yes, I understand, sir. Good. Now, we want two aeroplanes ready for takeoff one hour before dawn. They'll be armed with uh, four 20-pound bombs each. They'll remain at readiness on the ground until we get a report of a Zeppelin sighting on the telephone link. Now, when we get a call out, I want those machines taken off immediately. No last-minute dithering excuses, mechanical failures, uh, visits to the latrines, Mr. Galeon, <laughs> Mrs. Bramington. Now, you get your information from Sergeant Mills. Work out the Zeppelin's probable course, 
And when you've done that, work out a course for our machines to fly so that we intercept them just as they're about to make their descent. Understood, right? sir. Any questions? Uh, there is one thing, sir. Yes? Uh, well, sir, chances are, as I see it, sir, We'll see the Zeppelin flying over Belgium on his way back to Ghent. Yes, over Brussels, yes. Well, up to now we've managed to avoid the areas where we know the Eindeckers mostly operate, sir. But this way we'll be flying right over the Ypres salient, sir. Well, we're almost bound to run into an Eindecker, sir. So it seems to me like asking for trouble not to leave, use at least one machine, sir, as an escort, sir. Yes. Well, flying pairs. One machine, armed with the 20-pound bombs, one machine to act as escort. So I'd like Sergeant to Farmer, you are detailed to act as escort to Sergeant Hollywake. Thank you, sir. That's all. Thank you. Sir. Oh. Well, I think that's a wonderful idea. Yes. Marvellous. Early start tomorrow. Good night. Okay. Good night, sir. an extra four hours tonight. Nurse Thompson didn't show up. Have you heard from Alan? No. Billy Hollis in the casualty list today. Yes, I heard. I remember him on his first day at school. Miss Winshaw asked me to look after him. Cry nearly flooded the place out. I took him by the hand and he said, will you be my friend? And now... I hear things, you know, up at the Grange. The song they sing about staff officers. Make it sound like a game. Yeah, I reckon that's all it is to some of that generals. Great big game. I had a nightmare last night. A dream? Well, I saw Alan flying along the... But, Laura, if we all believe what we saw in our dreams... Now, listen, Lord, I'm going to tell you something. If you're going to be Alan's wife, you're going to need a lot more spine, a lot more backbone than you've got now. Alan's not going to be putting up with all this weeping and wailing of yours, I can tell you. Quarter to five. I'm awake. You were talking again. Was I? Sorry. You know what? You're what they call obsessed. Well, it's nice to know first thing in the morning. You can't think of nothing else but shooting down one of them little line deckers, can you? That's right. Except maybe shooting down two. Oh, by three two section. Hello. Uh, Sam Marie on the line. You haven't seen anything, I suppose. No? Thank you. Who'll win the war? I'll tell you who'll win the war. The bloke what's alive at the end of it, he'll be the winner. Take a tip from a professional soldier. Look after, look number, after one. number one. Yeah, well, it so happens I have something worth fighting for. I've got a wife and three kids, but I'm not fighting for them. I'm staying alive for them. War to end wars, don't you believe it? It's a load of eyewash, that is. Yeah, well, if we all felt like that, we might as well all go home, haven't we? Wouldn't be a bad idea, neither. We're wasting our time, you said it yourself. Why sea flight? Four miserable little B-2s when the, the Navy's been flying raids by the score. All right, why then, eh? You know the reason. Come on, tell me why. Come on, let's go and stand by a little area. Ah, place. you know Shall the reason at all, do you? Just pretend you do. Yeah, it gives you a height advantage. Look, I know, and you don't. Come on. Maybe you should know for your own good. 
These raids of ours on the Zeppelin sheds. It's political, that's what. It's got nothing to do with winning wars or protecting women and kids from being bombed. Just generals fighting for power. Okay? Now we do get the off. Don't forget you're my escort, will you? We stay together. No hearing off after the nine deckers. I see, nine de I see a nine decker and I'll make up my own mind, thank you. Not while we're on these Zeppelin sheds, Rage, you don't. Listen, you go on playing old soldiers and I'll fight my bit of the war my way. Just a minute. Professional disagreement, that's all, sir. About what? Nothing to say, sir. Sergeant Hollyway. Nothing to say, sir. Wait outside, please, Sergeant Farmer. Sir. That is. What's it all about, Sergeant Hollywake? Well, sir, as you know, I've been sharing a tent with the young farmer these past couple of weeks. And to be honest with you, sir, well, he's driving himself too hard. It's been getting worse. He hasn't slept these last three nights, to my certain knowledge. You can only think about one thing, the Eindecker. It's like an obsession with him, sir. Yes, well, those Eindeckers have given Seaflight a hard time. We've suffered quite a number of casualties. Well, I understand that, sir, but as you yourself said, we've got to forget the Eindeckers for the time being. Well, Sergeant Farmer can't forget the Eindeckers. He's obsessed with the idea of shooting them down. But between you and I, Sergeant, it's an obsession I'm inclined to share. Would that be all, sir? No, it won't be all. Sergeant Farmer's not easily provoked. Wasn't trying to provoke him, sir. The opposite, in fact. Just trying to make him see sense. Oh, indeed. I've always found Sergeant Farmer rather too sensible. Not too sensible at the moment, sir. Well, what have you been telling Sergeant Farmer? Well, sir, as you know, I've been up at the HQ for the past six weeks. And I think I know a little bit about what's behind these raids. What did you say to Sergeant Farmer? I told him I thought there was a political reason behind these raids, sir. Yes. Major Lansing's just arrived, sir. I'll be with him in a moment. Sergeant Farmer! You're both sir. sergeants, non-commissioned officers. I won't have you squabbling like a pair of schoolgirls. Do you understand? Yes, sir. sir. I understand there's a rumour going round that this new job of ours is for political reasons. And whether this rumour is true or not, it's no concern of ours. It will not, in any way, affect our zeal for the task in hand. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Catching Trigger Sea Flight. Yes, over the coast of... <laughs> Get Mr. Bramington, quickly. Sir. Japan, yes. Bramington, yes, just, yes. North, northeast, yes. Just get outside, the pair of you. Go on, move. Northeast, yes. Switches off, petrol on. Which is off, petrol on. Air closed, suck in. Head 040 and climb to 8,000 feet. We think he's heading for Ghent. You should spot him just as he's coming down. Right, sir. Good luck. Thank you, sir. Contact. Contact. Managed to bag a Zeppelin for the general, I gather. Not yet. I have hopes. Oh. What do you mean, oh? Well, those two machines. We're heading for Ghent. We're hoping to get a Zeppelin as he's coming down. The conference was held yesterday at short notice. Pity, really. I mean, if you do manage to bag a Zeppelin today, a success like that would have been a useful lever. Mr. Churchill is a great man for results. There appear to be the only thing to make any impression on him. It's too late now, though, of course. 
I'm here to tell you that you can resume your attacks on the Eindeckers. Just lie there. Take it back to the bond store. Perhaps Sergeant Farmer attacked the Eindecker in order to give you a chance of flying on towards your target. That's one way of looking at it, sir. All right. What's your view of what happened? The Eindecker would not have engaged us if Sergeant Farmer and I stayed together, sir. A foolhardy course of action. In my view, yes, it was, sir. Whereas your own course of action, dropping your bombs, heading for home, was prudent. I'm alive, sir. My machine's in one piece. We'll both be ready for another go at the Zeppelin tomorrow. You would have been. How do you mean, sir? I have instructions to send you back to HQ. I see. May I ask the reason, sir? I understand the backing of Zeppelin's no longer necessary. Oh. <laughs> well, shame about that, sir. Just as we were beginning to get the hang of the job, as it were. Yes. Thank you, sir. May I say one thing, sir? Yes. Sergeant Farmer, sir. We didn't really see eye to eye, but that doesn't mean to say I didn't have a certain respect for the man, sir. And his action in attacking the iron ducker, sir. Over to the voice. Leave me in there, or I'll tighten him up for you. There we are. Now dress off the heels. Here, I never thought I'd see this, missus. There's a better woman's work for you. No! Oh, good. And a picture 
of him taken by Mr. Galeon. Mr. Galeon? Well, I said, come on, then, let me see. He says he's been quite well, been doing something special, but he'll write to you soon. Well, that's not a bit like Alan. Wait, is he? By the way, I I'm sorry about the other night. Oh, that's all right. I'm the one who should apologise. I was just a bit tired. That's yeah, right. it is, missus. No. Oh, about that, then. You made it. Does that pass muster, though? It looks all right to me. All right. That's more than all right. That's a damn fine horse you, that well, is. Oh, thank you, Tom. <laughs> I never thought you'd manage to work in this place, <laughs> Mrs. But well, you credit where it's due. I think this calls for a bit of celebration. I've got some points somewhere that'll put a bit of colour into our cheeks. Uh, do you think we ought to? What do you mean? Well, what with the king abstaining from strong drink? Oh, you. <laughs> hey, the king never had to make an horse, you, did he? <laughs> Here, fix the pot, missus. Yes, who is it? Oh, it's you, Mr. Roberts. I'm <laughs> sorry. No, thank you. There's no reply. Mrs. Farmer, Tom says that it should be his horseshoe, that we should name it 